COVID, and we know this now, and David Fedson, no doubt, will talk to you about this in a lot more detail, but long COVID is predominantly a vascular disease, not a respiratory illness. And it is predominantly a, a, a disease of the microvasculature as well. So what we're seeing with long COVID is we're seeing it, it enters through the respiratory tract, but then in the blood vessels, you're getting this chronically stimulated immune response, you're getting maladaptive innate immune response, you're getting a chronically stimulated T lymphocytes that are chucking out lots of cytokines in response to the, the viral antigen, the spike protein, um, and they are becoming chronically stimulated and you're getting immune exhaustion. So therefore you're probably at increased risk of um, further infections because you're becoming immunocompromised with reduced T cell, uh, productive T cell activity. But in addition to that, these pro-inflammatory cytokines are inflaming the inner linings of the blood vessels called the endothelium. That then triggers another response where you get platelet activation, um, which are the molecules involved in blood clotting, and it triggers the coagulation cascade and you end up with with this cytokine and clot soup. Now in long COVID, these clots are very small, they're amyloid microclots. And they're, the other thing that's important to mention is they're not normal clots. In the presence of spike four protein, fibrin, which is the molecule that's involved in the clotting, becomes misfolded and it becomes misfolded into an amyloid formation. And when it does that, it also traps other molecules inside it. So you end up with these fibrin amyloid microclots that are resistant to fibrinolysis, which means the body is struggling to break them down. And if you make too many of these clots, what we believe is happening is these clots are getting sequestered or stuck, we think, in the capillary vascular beds. And when you have enough of these, it is obstructing the flow of oxygen to every single organ in your body. And that is what is causing the symptoms of long COVID. But in addition to that, we think the clots themselves are immunogenic. And so you get inflammation at the site in the capillaries. The capillaries are not as well protected as the larger blood vessels because they don't have a tunica adventitian or basement or, um, or, or a, a a tunica media and so they become inflamed and then you get this disruption of the, the capillary integrity and you get leakage of the inflammatory molecules into the other organs and you get organ damage for example there's lots of evidence now showing damage neuroinflammatory damage in the brains of individuals with long covid in the hearts of individuals with long covid but in in addition to this you've got all these prothrombotic tendencies where you end up with things like heart attacks and strokes and various other issues now when it comes to the long covid this is one of the things that we're not talking about so although the 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 death rates are going down the disability rates are going up we have 148 million people with this condition now i spoke to this gentleman on the phone today he had clearly seen multiple different doctors. He clearly had undiagnosed postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome that has been completely missed. And he's very disabled as a result of it. And when I sat him down and we talked him through and we did the test that a lot of other medics are not doing because they're maybe not specialists in this area, he cried. I have had a 30 year old man sobbing his heart out to me on the phone. And sorry, I'm actually getting quite emotional about it because yeah. this is um, this is happening all the time, yeah. and it, some of it is treatable if we can just get a better campaign of education, which is what we're trying to do through the World Health Network to train other doctors so that we we can get it accepted that there are tests that you can do that can diagnose some of these abnormalities. And there are treatments we already have. There's lots of treatments we're still testing, but there are treatments we already have that can help reduce the level of disability. And this is the message we need to get out. But the other message we need to get out is that there's very clear evidence from the published literature that reinfection increases your risk of long COVID substantially. So we have to have some sensible public health mitigations because I have seen the inner lining of people's blood vessels. I've seen the torn endothelium. That's after one in two infections. I have no idea what their blood's going to look like after 10. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. People are going to get repeated infections. What's it going to do? Ray, you're great. And please, uh, anybody coming on to our briefings and shedding a tear or two and admitting it, 
is fine. Not admitting it is fine. But thank